Henri. <laughs> he likes to be outside. He likes the fishing and the cows and he likes to be rambunctious and get dirty, don't you? Sometimes I have a hard time keeping up with him. <laughs> yeah, he just, he runs all the time. It's just on the go all the time. And when he finally does, it's like he'll curl up on your lap and it's like, I'm tired and he'll go to sleep. <laughs> it's like, okay, this is good. I need a nap too. <laughs> Being in the hospital for so long, not being able to move, he's definitely making up for it now. That's for sure. Dead at 20 weeks pregnant, they told us that he had something wrong with his heart. They couldn't tell us what, but we knew that there was gonna be some issues. They kinda let us know that he was gonna have to have something, some kind of surgery. They weren't sure if it was gonna be as soon as he was born or, you know, later on it could have been, we could have had surgery up until he was two. But they said by two, he would for sure have to have this surgery. I uh, just really scared. Um, I just didn't know the outcome of everything. So. At seven months, that's when we found out he would have to have the transplants. Um, when he was on the ECMO machine, the life support machine, they tried to take him off of it a couple of times after his first attack, and they couldn't get it down far enough to where he would be able to come off of it. And, that's when they told us that he would have to have a heart transplant. So that same day they said, okay, we'll give you a couple days to think about it. And I was like, nope, no thinking about it. I called Jesse, I said, are you okay with us doing this? He said, yes. <laughs> so we went ahead and got everything started. I took all, talked to everybody I had to talk to, signed all the papers, and we got put on the list July 18th. At the hospital, we would take one step forward, like getting the ventilator off, and then the next day, I would be calling Carrie and saying, okay, now they're going to put the ventilator on plus something else. It was just like we would take one step forward and two steps back, sometimes three steps back. I would go up on Sunday afternoon and stay till Thursday, and then she would come up Thursday mid-morning and stay till Sunday afternoon. So we always had somebody there. With the love and support of his family surrounding him, Cooper, on two different types of artificial life support, waited for a new heart. Someone else's life has to end in order for a new life to be able to continue. And it, it's an amazing process that they're able to do that, but at the same time, it's a very sad process. You know, it makes, takes someone else's courageous decision to be able to help somebody else. Nearly two months later, on September 4th, Carrie got the life-saving call. Dr. Charles Huddleston was flying to Atlanta at 1 in the morning to pick up Cooper's new heart. He arrived back in St. Louis at 6 a.m. We were awake pretty well all night because Dr. Huddleston left about 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, we got to see the helicopter fly in and... Um, then we sat in the waiting room and waited, and no sleep. It was it was too exciting. And um, Dr. Huddleston came out and said that um, everything went great, and that uh, when he did the last stitch, the heart started beating on its own. So he said, I've never had one do that before. So I think that was a sign that he was definitely meant to have this heart. So. With all the research everybody's done, the Heart Association, you know, with all the schooling the doctors have to go through to be able to understand how the heart works, how to hook it up, I mean, it really is a miracle. It's, it's, it's fantastic knowing that all this research has, you know, helped all these people and all these hearts are still out there beating. While Cooper is thriving today thanks to the research of the American Heart Association, Cooper still needs us. He continues to take a large regimen of medicines daily that he will be on for the rest of his life to reduce the chance of rejection and failure of his transplanted heart. The hope is that someday those risks are minimized by further research and that new medications are discovered that can further guarantee Cooper's future and quality of life. The heart ball means a lot, a lot to us. You know, I'm sure it means a lot to all of the families who have had children that have heart transplant, heart disease, everything, you know, because that's a special night for their child, for our child. You know, it's all about him. And, you know, with all the research that they did, you know, it's kind of a salute to everybody. You know, all the research that everybody there has put into it and everybody, 
you know, around the world that continues to donate, you know, and then all the kids. It's pretty much a salute to everybody at that point. Everybody should feel, feel excited about what they donated to has done an awesome job, and he's proof. Step by, step by. <laughs> <laughs>